Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you here this morning. We're here to worship and praise God. And we'll begin that as soon as I see where I put my... Oh, well, I have to get another one real quick. So now, let's join together in the call to worship. All of us have experienced that feeling of being lost. When we tune into the Spirit, God's purpose is clarified for us. Made new like a new morning, and so we're going to join in singing 145, Morning Has Broken. <laughs> one another to this morning's service. It is good to see all of you this morning, and Happy New Year. Last year at this time, it was still 2017, and it was cold. <laughs> and only 42 people came for both services last Sunday. Even the Lutherans beat us by two, they said. <laughs> but a lot of the churches didn't even have worship. But anyway, we're glad you're here this morning. We are here to worship and praise God and to continue to grow as Christians as we hear his word and we're challenged by it and uh, also comforted by it as well. We have a few things going on. Today is our last session for strengthening families and the, uh, the youth in the families uh, led by Kelly is going to actually uh, make our meal today. So we're looking forward to that with excitement. 
And uh, I, th I, th I think, think uh, Wyatt's going to do most of the cooking, I believe. Is that right, Wyatt? Nope. <laughs> what? Oh, Garrett. Garrett's going to do the cooking. Okay, Garrett, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's going on today. Then, uh, normally when we undecorate the church, we do it right after worship, but because of strengthening families, we've changed our schedule, and we hope that that won't keep people from attending. So around 5 o'clock, the youth group and anybody else, it doesn't have to just be young adults, anyone can come along and we'll undecorate, and then we'll, uh, we'll get something to eat, either pizzas or subways or something else anyway, and uh, maybe the youth will make us, make us pancakes again. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's, that's today. Uh, tomorrow, we will have our Monday evening Bible study and our Tuesday morning Bible study will be Tuesday morning. Uh, one, one exception, but I'm almost positive it won't happen, but uh, my daughter Erin, who you know, has already had a tough time this year, well, on Thursday morning, they found out right around 7 o'clock, that her husband's dad had passed away from a heart attack. And his service is tomorrow. Uh, and I told her I, I'd be glad to come or whatever. And she said, well, right now I don't think I need you, Dad. But if I do, I will call and you better come. So, so for some reason, uh, I, if I have to call and cancel on Monday or Tuesday, I will do that. But I'll let you I'll try to let somebody know anyway. Um, and somebody said, well, go anyway, but she said, no, I don't want you to go unless I need, really need you, so <laughs> anyway, uh, and then Wednesday, we do have the trustees meeting, uh, oh, Tuesday, I almost forgot that, and that's real important, it's our turn once again to do the uh, food pantry, and so we, I know we have a couple of volunteers so far, but we haven't done a very good job of getting the word out yet, so if anybody else wants to participate in that, uh, contact uh, Julie either online or call her at the church office and uh, and if we think we don't have enough we may be hollering at some of you at the last minute so that's Tuesday around five o'clock uh, and uh, so we hope you can be there for that we also have the uh, we can we care basket out there again it'll probably be there through about Monday or Tuesday and then uh, sometime this week the committee will meet and we'll get those handed out to the people that need them. And if you know anybody that might need them, let us know. We also have the upper rooms uh, over here and the latest newsletters. And also we have the, uh, the uh, uh, church uh, uh, directory. So if you haven't picked one of those up, make sure that you do that as well. So next uh, Sunday, we have a special offering for Human Relations Day. And then Martin Luther King Day is on the following Monday, the 15th. And uh, on that week, uh, we have uh, pastor's meetings in Kearney. And so I'll be gone Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And actually, the meetings get over on Friday, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, go and stay with Erin and her family on Friday night. So I'll be back sometime on Saturday. So I think those are the main things. And because I'll be gone on the, that Saturday where we normally have the men's breakfast, we'll move it to the last uh, Saturday in January. Okay, does anybody have any other announcements? None? Okay, then I invite the youth to come forward. The kids, children. <laughs> anybody that feels young at heart. I think we still have a couple more. Wow, look at all of them. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? You full of sunshine? Full of love? Full of life? Yeah. You excited? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. And are you ready to do the good thing, the right thing? Yeah. Do you know what the right thing to do is? 
You do? How? How do you know? What? Somebody taught you. Who taught you? Parents? Anybody else? Teachers? The Bible? Anybody else? God? He, he sets rules and stuff for us. Does tell us what's right and wrong. Do you, so they've taught you how to do rights and wrong. Have you ever taught anybody else? Mm -hmm. Do you try to teach your little brothers or sisters or big brothers or sisters sometime? Yeah, sometimes your friends. It's, it's something we all have to do, learning what's right and what's wrong and then doing it. Even though if you know what's right, do you always do it? No, we don't, do we? Does that mean we're bad people? No, but it means we are sinners, and, that's, and Jesus loves all sinners. He doesn't want us to sin, but what he does forgive us when we do things that aren't, aren't right. And so, <laughs> and so that's important. We have lots of opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> we have lots of opportunities. Whoop. Okay, say, big sister, leave me alone. <laughs> but see, you were trying to make him do what was right, weren't you? Yep. And so, it's, we need, we need to, to listen when people try to teach us the right thing. And then we need to try to make good choices. And we also know that we don't always do the right thing. And so, we need to ask for forgiveness. A word that's used in the Bible is called repent. We need to confess that we've done wrong things. Do you ever do that to God? Do you ever tell him that you've done something that wasn't nice? Do you ever tell your parents that? Well, good. Because sometimes I know I didn't ever tell my parents when I did something that was wrong because I knew I'd get in trouble. <laughs> but it's important that we learn to do that because we are, you know, we, we're humans. We're going to do the wrong things. It doesn't matter if it's you or if it's me. You know, we do the wrong things sometimes. We hurt people with the things we say, with the actions that we take, and then we need to ask for forgiveness, both from God and we ask those, need to ask those people. And when we do things, you know, when we ask for, for forgiveness, when we confess, God is actually saying, well, well, I'm cleansing you. I'm forgiving you. Today is Jesus' the day that we celebrate Jesus' baptism. You know, just two Sundays ago, we celebrated his birth. When he wasn't baptized when he was a baby, he was baptized when he was 30 years old. But when he was baptized, he, he knew he needed it just because he was a human, even though he was God's son. But John the Baptist is the one who baptized him. And John said, no, I can't baptize you. You're the one who's perfect. Jesus said, you need to baptize me. And he went down in the water with a symbol that he was, his, his wrongs were washed away. And that's how we become when we completely give ourselves to God. He washes away our bad parts and gives us strength to be able to do the right things. And so that's, it's real important. So on his baptism day today, it's important to remember that water washes us, it cleanses us, just like when you take a shower or bath, it washes all the dirt off. Well, when we ask for forgiveness, Jesus washes all of our sins away too. And that's important to remember. So on his baptism today, let's just remember that every day we need to go to him and ask to be forgiven. So would you join me in an echo prayer? Dear God, <laughs> thank you for Jesus Christ. And for his baptism, thank you that it reminded each of us that we need to ask for forgiveness. We know we fall short of who you want us to be, but with your strength, we can become caring people. Help me love and forgive. Help me share with others. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And to help.
you remember Jesus' birthday and have he cleansed us, I was hoping to give you toothpaste or little bars of soap, but they were like a dollar a piece. So I, oh, you don't want bars of soap, huh? <laughs> That's really why I didn't get it for you. But instead, to remind you, remind you how important it is that Jesus washes us, I've got you a bottle of water. And so you can remember whether, when you drink this water or if you wash with it, that Jesus Christ forgives us. So you can get you some water and then you can go to Sunday school. Now it's time for us to share our joys and concerns. So what joys do we bring with us this morning? Yes. <laughs> it's funny, like I said, last Sunday it was too cold to go to church. This morning it's almost too hot. We want to go to the beach. <laughs> okay. What, what else? What other joys? <laughs> we need those silly things like that. So she has an M. That's her mom's handwriting, and so she can touch her mom. Okay, other joys. See, this morning, uh, Ron uh, 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 Zwaggert, uh, it's his birthday today. They said he was 45 years old, but <laughs> I don't, we don't believe that, though. And today is actually my, my youngest grandson's birthday. He's three years old today. So I got to go over last night uh, and uh, celebrate his birthday. So anybody else have birthdays or anniversaries? Yes. <laughs> Kelly's 19 plus 30. <laughs> and who does? Jackie does. Jackie has a birthday on Thursday. Okay. Other joys? It was a joy, joy to have the new year and joy to have, whoa, <laughs> I almost knocked someone over, I'm sorry. Uh, and it's joy to have our children and our Sunday school department and just, you know, lots, lots of things like that. Anybody else have anything else to celebrate? We've had some people that have, have experienced a healing touch during the holidays. In fact, every time I go up to the hospital to see if there's anybody to visit, they say, we don't have any patients. So that was good. So, okay. And I did see uh, Bella uh, on, uh, well, anyway, uh, thir Friday, uh, Thursday, I guess it was. And she actually is getting to go back to school just two hours a day. But she, and she has to take it easy. But she's, she's doing uh, much better. That's Bella Bandle. And so we're thankful for that. And uh, last I, I heard, uh, Daly Rose is also doing, doing much better. She had been in the hospital the week before, but I think she's doing okay. So that's good news. Uh, Kevin Ritchie did have his surgery and things uh, to put the plate uh, in his skull, and that went well. And it lists there and what, uh, where he is now uh, getting, getting his treatment and recovery. Uh, Doug will be undergoing a stem cell transplant here either this month or in February, so keep Doug Ross in your prayers as well. And Michelle uh, did have a treatment this week, and things are going okay for her? Okay. Uh, she, that's why it's, we always need the prayers and stuff, and so we want to 
keep keep uh, her in our prayers and Jean Ann is also getting her treatment and so keep Jean Ann in your prayers too and, and her family and I think probably this means that college kids are going to be going back to school again pretty soon right yep <laughs> so we'll keep all them in our prayers too okay anything else uh, see um, oh okay I do have a prayer sheet back there for for uh, uh, Aaron's uh, father-in-law's family, Leroy Koneski, and then there was also one there for Bob, yeah, Bob Clee, because he fell, went to a meeting in Oakley a couple weeks ago uh, for this uh, food, uh, you know, food thing that he's part of, food co-op, and when he came out of the meeting, he fell and he broke his ribs, and so he, he's still in a little bit of pain. He said he's much better than he was, though, so. Okay, anybody have any other people we need to need to pray for? Pray for. Okay, then just join, uh, let's have the pastoral prayer. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we're gathered here this morning on this beautiful, warm January 2018 day. We give thanks to you for the warmth, for the beauty around us, for this opportunity to come into the sanctuary and leave our troubles behind for a little while and to be comforted by your word and your presence. Also, we're challenged by it, though, but we're uplifted as well. We thank you so much for this opportunity to be here, for these faithful who are here, and for the strengthening of the spirit that comes to them each and every day. Continue to guide and direct us so we can be the kind of loving, faithful people that you would have us be so that we can then respond to the needs of others, not pass out judgments that belittle, but we can say things that build up. We thank you for the blessings that we mentioned today, for the birthdays, for the, the very special gifts that remind us of people from our past who have loved us, and for those, the, our community that's always there to support, support us and be there for us. We thank you for your healing touch for your comfort, for your guidance. But we pray for those people in need. We pray for Michelle and for, for Doug, for Jean Ann, for Kevin, and for Bob, and for Bella, and for Daly. We pray that you, you help them and help others that maybe we've forgotten about, that we haven't mentioned, or maybe we don't even know about. And we pray for each of us because we need your presence too. Thank you again for this day, for Jesus Christ. And we ask these things in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm going to share scripture with you from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, it's actually in chapter 1. It uh, starts almost right there at, the, at the, the beginning. But when we read it, you're going to notice that that even though it starts in verse 4, that it doesn't really say anything at all about the Christmas story. You know, Matthew and Luke have all kind of details about the Christmas story, but uh, Mark and John don't hardly tell us anything about it at all. And Mark jumps right in here and starts telling us about John the Baptist, who we did learn about, uh, how he's part of the Christmas story, and Luke and Matthew. Uh, his mom and dad were cousins of, of Mary, or well, Elizabeth and Mary were cousins, and they, they were old, Zechariah and Elizabeth, but God chose to give them a son, and this son was John the Baptist, and when his dad was told about that, he said, I can't believe it, this can't happen. And the angel said, it is going to happen, and because you can't believe, you're going to lose your voice until this baby is born. Well, he had nine months to, to contemplate, to pray, to listen to God, because that's one of the things, probably most of the time we're talking too much to hear God. Well, he couldn't <laughs> talk too much, so he listened to God, and he found out all these wonderful things that his son was going to do. And then once his son was born, he told everyone what John's responsibilities were, and who he was preparing the way for, and who he was preparing. He was actually preparing the people. Jesus was prepared, but he's preparing the people so that they won't shut their ears when Jesus gives his message and tells them that God isn't just for the Jews. He isn't 
just somebody you can put in a little box and control him. He is the all-powerful, the all-loving, and the all-forgiving. So anyway, uh, that's, that's uh, so here in Mark, then we hear about John the Baptist who is out in the wilderness and he's telling people that they need to repent and then Jesus comes and asks to be baptized. So starting in cha uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 4. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judea countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit, and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven and told him, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, like I mentioned earlier, today is our last day of Strengthening Families. 11-week program where we've been meeting with the parents and with the children, and they've both been learning about how families can bond closer together, how the children can learn the responsibilities that come with adulthood and how they can learn right from wrong and how everybody can work together to make the whole place a better place. We've learned that it's not easy. There's a lots of responsibilities come with being a parent, but there's also lots of responsibilities with being a child as well. And just like with the children, you know, I, sometimes they... They know what is right, but they don't always do what is right. But it's important that they're taught that, that they're given the opportunity to know what they should be doing. So it takes a lot of preparation to make a person into a really good person. It takes a lot of work upon the parts of lots and lots of people, and that one person has responsibility for themselves. They can't point the finger and blame someone else because they didn't turn out right. Each person is responsible for their own behavior. So it takes a lot of preparation so that we're ready for life. And to teach that class, those of us involved in it, right Lee and right, right Ruth, it takes a lot of work to get things ready, to make sure that we know the lesson and the, and the points that we're going to try to get across that day. Make sure that we've got food cooked, except today, because the youth are doing it for us. But it takes preparation to make all of those things work, to make them turn out. And if you are prepared, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it does mean that you have a better chance of making the choices that will please God. And so, Preparation is a key thing. It's something that we all need. It doesn't matter what it is. We have to do some work so that we can be ready for whatever the challenge might be. Jesus was sent by God to bring the knowledge of God, to bring a revelation of God to the world. You know, as God's son, I'm sure he was prepared. But God told Mary, or told Elizabeth and Zechariah that their son was going to be coming into the world to prepare the way for the Messiah. And this is what Mark tells us, that out in the wilderness was John the Baptist. He didn't look like a very appealing person. There he is, camel hair, he's got a belt around his waist, and, he, and he's eating locust and wild honey. Maybe at that time that wasn't so bad. To us it doesn't sound good at all. But that's what he did. We know that he was on the outskirts of society, 
That's one reason why he was out in the desert, out in the wilderness. But there he was, but people heard about him. And though those who also were on the outskirts of society, they were excited. Here's someone telling us that God loves us, and it doesn't matter if everybody else has shunned us, if they push us aside because we're poor, because we're weak, because we're blind, because we've been in jail or whatever, God's not going to do that. John says, come and repent. Come and repent. To ask for forgiveness. The Catholics for a long time have had a regular thing with confession. I know when I was growing up, a lot of my friends and families were Catholic. And I know they had to go to confession quite often. We in the Methodist Church don't do that very often. In fact, last week, I did have a prayer of confession in the bulletin, and because we don't do it very often, I even forgot to have us say it. But confession is an important thing. It's important that we realize that we aren't almighty, that we can't control everything. We aren't the ones who can be good enough so that we can be saved. We need help. We need help. And we'll say, oh yeah, I need a little help. I, I need some friend or two around me. Sometimes I need a counselor or something, but that's all. But no, we need the divine help from God. We need the holiness that only can come as we do the things to help us connect with God. That is what John the Baptist was doing. He was out in the wilderness telling the people that they had to come and repent. And he started something new. There's really not much mention in the Old Testament of baptism until John comes and tells the people that they need to be washed of their sins, need to be cleansed. And so that's why he was baptizing them in the River Jordan. That's why he was telling them to start anew and be ready for Jesus. Because Jesus was not going to come and give them the same message that they'd been hearing in the synagogue. That God was just there for the Jews. That God was just there for those who kept all the commandments and did things just right. Jesus says that God is there for everyone. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. No one can be too bad if they're willing to to ask God for forgiveness and ask God for help. And God is there for everybody. And so you had, this is what John is doing, what he's preparing, preparing the people so that they won't close their ears to Jesus' message when it's not that familiar to them because it's not what they've been hearing over and over and over again. So John has a big responsibility and he accepts that responsibility. And when he's on one of his missions where he's out there on the River Jordan telling people to come to him and to ask for forgiveness, there comes Jesus. Mark doesn't go into a lot of detail. Matthew and Luke give us a little more detail about it and tell us that, that Jesus came and asked. But here, all of a sudden, Jesus is there. He was baptized. He comes up out of the water because John has prepared the way. And that's when Jesus sees that the heavens have parted and the Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove and then he hears the voice of God that says, you are my beloved son. And then it tells us after that that Jesus grew, he obeyed God and made God happy. Jesus was prepared through the holiness of baptism so that he could go and present holiness to the world. John the Baptist was preparing people by asking them to ask for forgiveness, to be cleansed of your sins, be made new so that you could be holy and go forth and do the things that would bring holiness to others. That's an important thing. It's an important thing that we realize that we need holiness in our lives. And the only way to receive that holiness is to put ourselves in the presence of holiness. That's one reason to worship. 
That's one reason to open the Bible, another reason to come to Bible studies, another reason to spend time in prayer, another reason to be a servant to others is because we're in holy moments so that we continue to grow and grow closer in our connection with God. It doesn't matter how old you are, it's never too late, and it doesn't matter how young you are, you can understand God when he when you get close to him and when he comes to you last week I talked to the people that were here not very many but I talked to the people who were here about how important it is to to do those things to get close to God to have regu regular time that you spend with with God and that each and every time that you do is important but there was some girl, I think her name was Madeline. Huh. Madeline Small, maybe? Yeah. I think Madeline Small told me afterwards. She said, Mom and Dad didn't want to come to church today. <laughs> but I told them it was important that we go. It wasn't ever too cold <laughs> to come and be with God. She was Madeline, like most of you realize that it's important that if we're going to become holy, we need to have holy moments in our life. Worship is one of those, but it's not the only one. There's lots and lots of ways to experience God's holiness. And that's what John the Baptist was reminding the people. You can experience that holiness when you think that you've been cleansed of your sins when you ask for, ask for forgiveness and confess the things that you've done wrong, when you get down on your knees and you pray, when you open up that Bible and read the Bible, when you decide as youth that you're going to prepare the meal for the strengthening families and be a servant to those people who have been leading you to God. And we, as members of of the body of Christ, we too can go forth and serve. We can do the things that help bring holiness to us. Jesus Christ knows that holiness is important. And so when he was about to depart from this earth, and he was gathered in that upper room with his disciples, and they were celebrating the Passover, to remember God, he knew that it was important that they had their own things to do to help remember him and to remember what we needed to do to connect with God. And so when he took that bread, he surprised him when he said, he broke it, he said, this is my body. It's broken for you so that you'll know that I'm always with you. No matter how broken you may be, I'm there to make you whole. Then he took the cup and he says, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins so that they would know that he was always there with them. There are moments where we can experience holiness. And this is one of them when we receive communion. May you look at it as a special holy moment today, and then may you think about the other ways that you can experience holiness and then pass on the love of God to his world, because it's a world that's hurting, it's a world that's longing to be loved, and if we just continued to strengthen ourselves by taking part in the thing, blessing things, then we can be a servant who helps make this a better world. May you truly experience the presence of Christ today as we receive these gifts. May you go forth and serve. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 12. To Word and Table Service 2. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another.
Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us share time with God in a moment of silent prayer. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ has died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now, if the ushers would come forward, we'll worship and praise God by giving him our gifts. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we present these gifts to you out of love for you. We know in your hands that even though these gifts may not seem like much, amazing things can come about in this world because you have power of love and forgiveness and you're there to let people know that when they seem like outcasts that you are wrapping your arms around them. So let them experience love through these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 617, I come with joy, verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. 617. <laughs>
You may be seated and invite you to turn to page 13, the Great Thanksgiving, page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you sent John the Baptist to prepare people so that they might know Jesus when he came into their lives. And so we ask that you continue to prepare us so that we can experience holiness and know your ways and hear and accept the message of Jesus Christ. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. And on the night in which Jesus was in the upper room celebrating the Passover with his disciples, he took bread, and he, after he had given thanks for it, he took and broke it, and he surprised them when he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you are gathered together. And after they had eaten the meal, then he went and he took a cup. And he raised the cup to the heaven and said, Take and drink. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you are gathered together in remembrance of me and experience the renewal that only I can give to you. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the blood and body of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By his spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we do have an open table here at St. Francis United Methodist Church, which means that anyone can receive these gifts. We will do it by intention today, which means you'll be given or get a piece of bread, and you can dip it in the cup and then partake of that and then return to your seat. And if my helpers would come forward and then... The ushers will lead you up here to receive, receive these holy gifts.
Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for these wonderful gifts, for this opportunity to receive holiness from the Holy One. Strengthen us so that we can go forth and to bring holiness to the world, a world that's hurting, a world that's longing to be loved. And we, as your followers, can make a difference. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have 47. Reminded us how important the Spirit is. 347, the Spirit song. offers 